Hello, this is part two of My Roommate Let Something Into Our Apartment, and I Don't Think Is Going to Leave, written by Dead and Spread on the Reddit No Sleep. I woke up at about 1.30 to the sound of scratching at my door. It was like a dog begging to be let in despite the fact that neither Jackson or I have a dog. I wiped the sleep from my eyes and stared at the door with an intense focus. The sound continued. Small scratches, short and quick. It made me think a bit of scurrying rats gnawing on support beams in the walls. I slipped out of bed as quietly as I could and got closer to the door. I pressed my ear to the wood and could feel vibrations of whatever was scratching on the other side. Jackson! I called out, unsure if I was expecting a response. What's up, man? I heard him right away but not next to my door. He sounded like he was in the living room. I flung the door open to nothing. Moonlight crept in through the window and cast an eerie blue over the apartment, but Jackson wasn't there. No rat, no dog, no roommate. Nothing to have made the noise and no one to have called back to me. Maybe I should have been scared, but honestly, I was irritated. He was still trying to mess with me, and I just wasn't in the mood. I walked across the hall to his door and knocked on it aggressively. Jack! I almost shouted, but thought better. I kept my tone firm and knocked again. Jack! What the fuck, man? Silence. I pressed my ear against his door. Jack? I said again in a softer tone. He didn't respond. I tried his knob and the door wasn't locked. As I turned the handle, this creeping dread filled me that something awful was waiting for me on the other side of the door. Hey man, are you alright in there? I slowly pushed the door open, and as the room slowly came into view I saw Jackson sitting on his bed with his back to me. His posture was stiff, like before while he was watching the movie, hands on his knees, his body still as a statue. Dude, what the hell is... My words caught in my throat as the rest of the room came into view. I still can't fully believe what I saw standing there. A figure stood next to Jack, tall, I would guess almost seven feet. A sheet was draped over it like an old ghost costume, but without the eye holes. Just a white sheet with what looked to be a person underneath. I'm fine, Jackson spoke, but not alone. The thing underneath the sheet spoke with him in unison. Its grovelly, rotten voice tangled with his. I'm just hanging out with my new friend. I almost screamed, but I was so goddamn scared that at that moment, I was frozen in place. Something about this made me realize this was no joke. The thing under the sheet gave off the worst air of danger I'd ever felt in my life, like staring down the barrel of a gun. You came knocking the other night. They both spoke, the thing just a half second before Jack though, like it was guiding his voice. I let him in. He likes it here, so warm and inviting. I backed away slowly. A terror filled me and told me to flee. I felt like if I ran it would chase me, like locking eyes with a predator in the wild. We could all be friends now, the best of friends. Jackson says you're easy to scare. Show me. With that, it moved across the room and then it was directly in front of me. It didn't walk or run. It was like it fucking fast forwarded. Startled, I stumbled backwards and into the wall behind me, cracking my head on a framed picture. I scrambled to my feet and looked up. Jackson was once again wearing that stiff smile and standing next to this thing. This intruder. Come on, brother. They said together. Let's all watch something scary. The sheet lifted ever so slightly and a gaunt gray arm slid from underneath. Thin bony fingers reached for me and snagged the collar of my shirt as I attempted to bolt down the hall and to the front door. I heard the fabric rip as I tore myself free and sprinted to the exit. 
We can all live here together. No need to run. The voice got muddier, uglier. It sounded like it was underwater and distorted shredded vocal cords. I flung open the front door and flew into the hallway. The hall lights burned my eyes for a second as I ran to the stairs. All around me, at every apartment door, I heard knocking as I tore my way down the hallway. I saw some people opening their doors to find out what was going on. Each one of them went blank as soon as they did. I watched some of them fling the door open ready to scream at whoever was knocking so late, but their expression dropped and their eyes went as glassy as Jack's. I jumped down, skipping three to four steps at a time, my bare feet slapping against the cold vinyl floors of the building's hallways. More and more doors opened, people standing frozen at the threshold, and those tall sheet-covered entities standing next to them. Some were guiding them back into their homes. Some just watched me as I moved as quickly as I could down the hall. I burst out through the front door and into the warm night air. I must have ran three or four blocks before the realization hit me that I was in my pajama pants. No phone, no wallet, no keys, no shoes, and no fucking idea what to do. I ended up finding an all-night diner that let me use their phone. I thought about calling the cops. But what do I say? Ghosts have taken over my apartment building and the residents are hypnotized? Possessed? Nothing I could say wouldn't sound insane. I would get treated like a fucking crackpot. I called my sister. I wasn't even sure what to say to her. I told her something was wrong with Jackson. He was acting crazy and I was not comfortable staying at the apartment anymore. I've been here for three days now. I don't know what to do anymore. At the urging of my sister, I called the police to at least do a wellness check on Jackson. I was terrified of sending anyone to that apartment building but they told us they checked on him and everything seemed fine. He answered all their questions normally. Told them he had pulled a bad joke on me, and he was okay. This was not a joke, and I feel like I'm going crazy. My sister Ashley and her husband are urging me to just go home and talk it out with him. Or at least get my things. I don't know what to do, though. I feel like I'm losing my mind. <laughs>